G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls. Now, have you ever bought an item of furniture from a very popular Swedish company and not have it go together perfectly? I would say no, and the reason why is because firstly they're mass producing thousands of them, and secondly, they've got their system down pat. I, on the other hand, with this, do not. Now, my dear old dad could never even assemble said furniture company's table or chairs or coffee tables without having to modify it. In fact, I left him with a coffee table once from that company, came back an hour later, and he drilled about 40 more holes and put it together the way he thought it was supposed to go together, and quite frankly, totally destroyed it. But that was like my beautiful old dad used to do. You know, he was just always had to modify. Well, it looks as though I've inherited that trait. This deck needs some modifications and there's quite a number you can sort of briefly see one right here this one's been an absolute mongrel and up the back i've got a couple of modifications that are required these are all things i need to do to improve the form and function of this deck ones that i probably could have foresaw but certainly now that i'm thinking about the boat being on the water in the near future um, they really do need to be done now this week i'm going to deal with an issue where the noses of this boat didn't quite fit. And I'm gonna show you how I've got sorting that problem out uh, before I tie this deck down. It's still not joined at this stage. So, lots to come. I'm back from uh, feeling pretty crook for a couple of weeks and I'm starting to get my energy back. It is still a bit of a fatigue issue, but I'm here eight hours a day and I'm struggling through it. Let's get into it, but don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like. Go over to the composite shop. There's a couple of really good videos over there. Now, I've got one there on spraying Jelco with a high volume, low pressure gun. And, uh, and up on Patreon, it's there. And in a couple of months, it'll pop up on YouTube. Thanks for joining me. Let's get into it. So what I'm talking about here is the way the whole side comes down here like this. When it reaches here, it's around about 20 millimeters inboard than the hull is. And it's not because I put bulkheads in or anything. It's purely because this nose, I don't think ever fit the hull perfectly. And this is the quandary with old molds and older design boats. They were handmade, um, not with CNC. And this is the beauty of the new CNC things. They can almost make them fit perfectly. So I've come up with another solution. I'll take you down into the, into the hull, into the port cabin down here. Now this is all closed in and I've got it pretty much fitting absolutely perfectly and where my issue is really it's sort of emanating from here all the way along up into this wardrobe and although it's very hard to see I'm aiming for perfection here so I just squeeze through the door and this here is about 20 millimeters out we have a bit of an underbite and I intend to fix it. Um, however, fixing it is not going to involve bog and filler like a lot of uh, manufacturers would do. They would actually simply get on the outside and bog and fill the outside area there, fill it with bog, fare it back. What I intend to do, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a process, but from about here, all the way forward, all the way to the nose, I'm going to cut it on the curve from above and then I'll expand the nose, I'll expand that nose out 20 millimeters and then repair it from underneath while I've got access to it. I can easily lay four layers of 600 double bias under there and improve that deck structure without, and, and by the way, keeping the cosmetics of the surface finish by having a simple gel coat fairing job rather than bogging it, sparing it, trying to get it true while I'm on a ladder 10 feet up in the air trying to get this square. I'm better off to do all of the restorative work from the inside. So how I've done that is I've driven some wedges in there and I'll show you what I'm doing up the top. What I'm actually intending to do is I've wedged it at the nearest bulkhead to where it started to, where it's from where it's perfect. So it's absolutely perfect here, perfect there, perfect there. But as I go forward, I start to lose the seam or the mating seam. Now there is a gunnel strip that runs all the way down the outside, but it's not gonna be good enough for me. I do not want an underbite. 
and uh, I'm not going to have one. I basically decided I'm going to do everything I can to repair it at this stage rather than uh, at a later stage once I've joined it all. Okay, so by putting a couple of wedges in here, um, and what I've also done, you'll notice it's a bit, um, bit of fiberglass there. I've actually intending to drill through the flange and put some bolts in and clamp it in place so that the deck can't move while I'm doing this. And I've put another wedge up in here to get it out to shape. And then what I'm going to simply do is up around here, I've actually drilled a hole right here. And by drilling that hole, that gives me my start point and I'll slice it all the way along, uh, away from the foam. So I'm into the solid glass there. And then I'll just simply come back in and tab it all the way along, all the way to the nose, make sure that I've got, you know, a complete um, new surface under, underlying and then I can simply fair some gel coat into the uh, into the surface once I get the actual alignment correct. So this nose will be pulled out around about one and a half to two centimetres up at the bow. It's only going to be two millimetres here and that'll give me the ability to be able to bolt the flange down and then repair it in situ and then I can remove the bolt and it'll fit again. Now it is the same on the other side and that's uh, was originally I did some measurements and pulled this in and if I hadn't have pulled the mold in I would have had an even greater problem but over in here and this is before I start cutting out windows and weakening the whole deck structure I'm better off to fix this same deal a couple of wedges in here drill the hole up in there and from there forward all the way you can see it here we're actually losing the seam line or the separating line here it's quite a marked gap and you know it's basically a good 20 millimeters 25 millimeters all the way we're actually almost at around about three centimeters or 30 mil here so over an inch uh, but by moving that out an inch right from the front i'll get this to fit how it needs to fit and repair it from underneath get on the top re-gel coat it polish it out hopefully end up with the same contour and no cosmetic lump or problems with the fairing going forward Well, it's pretty precarious laying here because I'm um, 10 feet up. <laughs> anyway, so I'll tighten this one down and this will secure it to the whole side. And I'm only damaging the flange here. I'm not actually damaging the boat itself. Now I've just bolted the flange down here to secure it in place. And I just went downstairs and I've drilled a small hole here. And that hole uh, will mark the beginning of the slice that goes forward along to the bow of the boat. Now, what I've got to be mindful of the fact is that I've got room here to be able to fare the gel coat. Now, this slice is only going to be a, a line, effectively, and it'll gradually get bigger as it goes towards the front, but what I don't want to do is interfere with this anti-slip pattern that's already here. I want to make sure I've got like this much room to be able to fare, you know, that five millimeter wide slot is going to be like probably 60 millimeters wide by the time I end up fairing it back. But what I'm going to be able to do is maintain this curve. Now, so that hole there uh, indicates the start point and will also stop this crack from fissuring as I start to part it. The idea of drilling the hole is you stop the stress crack from, from continuing on. I mean, it's all going to be repairable, but I want to try and avoid as much repair as possible. But I'll be cutting along here. Now, I'm going to make a scribe with this um, piece of ABS plastic. I've just thermoform basically bent it to the shape of the hole and I'll be drilling the hole right there and continuing this all the way down so that as I go I'm maintaining that line away from this anti-slip. I don't want to unfortunately get in here somewhere and then have to try to repair this area here so it's going to be a little bit of work to do but uh, once I draw that line I'll be able to get my diamond grinder and grind this out and then expand this part out to where it needs to be bolt it down, get underneath and glass it where necessary.
Now, you'd think I'm pretty crazy uh, cutting a perfectly good deck like that, and it did actually provide quite a lot of flexibility. Uh, cutting that slot was such a good idea because what it gave me was the ability to move it into place. The only problem was securing it in place. So you can see there I've got some wooden blocks actually screwed onto the internal bulkheads. I was then able to make some small plywood cleats and use some batten screws to actually screw those cleats in place, which then tortured the deck down into place and created a, uh, a fair finish. Now, the important thing too was that I actually, at the same time, screwed the flange of the deck to the flange of the hull in the correct place. So basically I'm stretching and torturing the whole thing to a good fit. Righto, so I've been able to maintain that shape just by using a couple of cleats. Now those cleats are, you know, those holes that the cleats are drilled through are just going to be easy repairs, but ultimately I've been able to maintain the shape and it's not going to look untoward when it's finally... Uh, you've just got to be prepared to make a couple of modifications to make things perfect. There's no point in, uh, in panicking about stuff. You just think things through and ultimately there's always a solution. You just have to make sure that you make good decisions. Uh, when I was cutting that, wasn't sure whether it was a good decision, but I think it is now. Um, I'm going to be able to make that look absolutely perfect. That's simple, simple, basic fiberglass fairing and, uh, and nice and easy to complete. So I've got this so close now. I've got basically five cleats in here bolted through and I've also put a screw here into a block attached to the bulkhead. I'm trying to avoid putting too many cleats on because it's just going to be repairs in the end, but I've now got that perfectly back to shape. Increased it by, God, it's like 15 millimeters, but that 15 millimeters is going to bug me for the rest of my day. So I'm just going to fix it. <laughs> so I'm going to go in now. My preferred mode of entry is through the window as you do, I'll go through the window, <laughs> down the stairs, I've got to do the nuts up. If Janet was here, she could be down here doing the nuts up, but she's not, because she's bludging. Well, no, not really. She lost a mum this week, and uh, it's been a bit of a tough week. Um, her mum's in England, and Janie was 93, and just a wonderful, wonderful lady. Uh, you know, probably about the best mother-in-law you'd ever ask for, and and I really had a lot of respect for her. And given that she's um, ten thousand miles away, she was, you know, still integral, an integral part of our family. And, uh, and Janet's really had a bit of a tough week, so I've given her the week off, but she's back to it next week. I'm not going to let her have that much time off. This boat building, and uh, Janie would have wanted us to keep it going. So anyway, so I'm here, under here. You can see here now. What I'm going to be able to do? I'm going to be able to glass from here. To there, there to there, and do a patchwork of three to four layers of 600 double bias. And what that'll do, it'll form the join. I'll leave it for a couple of days, then I'll remove all the screws, and then I'll do one complete two more layers over the whole thing. And then when I join the hull and the deck, I'll actually start up here and go all the way down, and thereby reinforcing the whole thing substantially, you know, without having to, you know, go to too much grief. The physical fairing on the top is only going to be very minimal. Um, I'll probably use a filler for here and hopefully the glass will protrude into there a bit. I'll actually tape it before I glass it and that'll allow the glass to actually nestle up in there which will fill it naturally anyway and it won't take much filler and just uh, some fairing compound and hopefully 
that'll be the job done and uh, and no one will ever notice and no one will ever know, no one in the world is ever going to know that I did this repair, except you guys and uh, that's a considerable amount of people, so, <laughs> but that's what this is all about. As I tighten this, it flattens out on the join and gives me an almost seamless uh, transition with which to be able to then glass and really get a good result. You need cutting, modifying, reglassing, filling and fairing. That is how these boats are all made and uh, you're never gonna get them perfect when they're old boats like this. I actually did a pretty reasonable job restoring it, but certainly not good enough. You can see there, I've got a hole there. That stopped the crack from continuing on and now it's ready for glass. So with those cleats in place and the shape defined on the bow and along the sides there, along the gunnels, I'm actually going to use some masking tape just to stop any resin and cloth from protruding above the level of the gel coat. I'm going to actually continue on with this repair over the next few months and probably won't finish it until I have the deck actually locked down in place. So it's sort of one of those things I'm doing a little bit every day. For now, I'm going to move over to our hardtop build that's happening up in the factory very very good to be able to get onto something new and a little bit interesting so I'm lucky to have the mold for the flybridge of the power catamaran that uh, my boat was also made as a as a production boat now this actual mold is certainly not going to be suitable for a sailboat it has an extra lounge suite it has a helm it has a sink and a bloody barbecue platform and everything on it it's certainly not going to be a very good look on a sailboat i'm really not up for a flybridge um yacht i don't want to have my boom way up in the sky which is where it would be should i put this particular mold component on the top of my existing catamaran and uh, and certainly by raising the boom you're going to increase the uh the center of effort or raise the center of effort for the sailing uh, perspective so not a great result so what i'm anticipating doing here is using the outer line shape to give me the right shape which i know fits the boat so that's number one the second one is i need to remove all of the deep wells and the moldings that are on this um, because they're just not going to be suitable for my boat obviously as i mentioned so the way i intend to do that i have four sheets of this huge melamine um, uh, boards and they've got two faces they've got a really super glossy face on the other side that i intend to ultimately use as a vacuum table uh, it came as packaging with joel uh, our, our um, joinery fellow next door to us when he received a whole heap of really high-end product it actually came as packaging and it'd be worth a fortune but luckily i've been able to acquire it i'm going to use the melamine face of it because a i know that gel coat won't stick to it and b it's reasonably uh expendable for me i can basically throw it away at the end or continue to use the other face as a vacuum table or something like that but anyway in any case what i have to do is i have to fill in the entire cockpit mold and make it like a big giant dish and essentially have a flat surface now i was originally going to change the mold and put in my own anti-slip pattern and, uh, and I'm going to have a cockpit helm where there's going to be an area cut out of it. Uh, I've come to the conclusion it's going to be a lot quicker for me to simply laminate up the outer shape with a simple flat surface, a flat gel coat surface, and then I can add features such as drainage, um, deck organizers for halyards and lines, certainly for the cockpit helm that i'm going to have the cutout will be added and i'll just add foam laminate it in ferret paint it gel coat flow coat it and then paint it so there's a whole range of things i can do here but the main thing really is the outer perimeter shape now now that i've joined it together haven't quite bolted it exactly together yet but i'm starting to think about it and this is something i'm going to be able to work on maybe a day a week for the next four weeks or so just to get it ready so that when i go to laminate it i'm simply going to be laminating a big dish and uh and it'll only take a few days to make this it'll be a simple one day gel coat one day i'll get all the layers down put foam on it last day do the last two layers let it sit for a week demold it stick it straight on the boat that's my plan you can see here this area here is actually the cockpit cutout for the ladder or the staircase that went up 
into the flybridge. I'll just show you a photo of that particular cockpit access up onto the flybridge. Now, the problem I've got is that I need to get everything at around this level here. And this is going to be a problem. So I'm gonna to have to cut this out along the base at around that bottom level there. Uh, because that's the desired level I want. I basically want this to come up a little bit and be around this area here so that I'm getting the big circular shape that's going to engage into the roof of my my uh, my saloon. And basically I'm going to have to frame this up down the bottom here with some um, 4x2 frames, just basically a stud frame to stop it from collapsing as I'm walking on it and, uh, and laminating those first couple of layers which are gonna be critical. So this whole area here will be flat all the way up and engage around about six or eight inches down from the top of the mold all the way around. And what nice thing is, I'll be able to retain the outer perimeter shape, as you can see here. Hard to see at the moment. It does have quite a defined shape around, and that's the shape I want my cockpit roof to actually retain. And the other thing, which is really, really important, it's a bit hard to see it with the strap, but from side to side, and this, this would be the port side over here, from that side to the other side, it has a very defined dish shape, and that will aid in water spilling off and, uh, and obviously allow the water to run away from the boat rather than into it, <laughs> should I decide to make my own cockpit roof. Now, I did think about just designing and making my own, but because I've got this brilliant shape, it uh, is gonna make a, a laminating a lot easier. It simply means I'm using a mold rather than having to prefabricate and then fair and sand and then paint. I will end up with a gel coat surface and I'll be able to then add any slip where necessary. I'm gonna get started on just getting some rough shapes of these big boards. I've got four of those that are going to fill the back section of it and then I'll work on the front here. All right, so I've broken out my chain jig and I'm going to use that. I've actually used that to determine the shape of the stern of this, um, this cockpit roof. But um, what I'm gonna do is basically scribe this onto here. That will give me a rough fit. There will be a lot of plasticine filling in the gaps here, so I'm not overly worried about accuracy. I'm gonna sand this to fit, but then I'll fill the gap and radius it with plasticine to make sure that I get a really nice sort of contoured shape. All of it is going to be modifiable at the end when I pull it out of the mold. That is looking so much better. I've got that within about five millimeters and I reckon with a little bit of sanding, I'll be able to get it dead accurate. So that's just gonna be plasticine filled with quite a large radius. And of course the gel coat won't stick to it. Might need a bit of tidying up around the outside, but it's a really quick way of getting a product uh, that is basically the size of this mold out. And then the modifications can continue, but uh, I've got a lot to do. There's four more sheets to go in here and then I have to start working on the front of it. So as much as I don't want to, I need to remove this to enable me to continue flat along this whole cockpit roof. Uh, this is actually sitting up about oh, eight or so centimetres, so I need to get down to this level here, so I'm gonna have to grind this out. Now what this is is actually the entrance to the flybridge. It's where the staircase comes up and there's actually a Lexan or a polycarbonate door there, so it's got to be cut out in any case. Um, I'll keep the piece, whoever buys the mould off me can simply tuck it back on, plasticine it and uh, and reuse it. I would even leave it off to be honest, I'll basically leave it off because it's just a waste of glass, you're going to cut it out regardless. But uh, I'm going to cut that out now and then I'll be able to continue on with these flat sheets all the way over to here and then I can start to work on getting it finalised. Okay, with that entrance door now cut out, I've got a continual flat surface all the way to the outside here. I'm just gonna put the last sheet in here. Now it's not wide enough to go all the way to the edge. I've got to put another slither on the outside there. So 
So you'll notice over here, there's quite a void here that needs to be filled. And I'm going to use um, these large 4x2 battens or 2x4s or whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to basically block it all the way along and leave that batten halfway out so that the next piece will sit on top of that and extend out to where this template is. That'll be the process. Now I'm also going to have to form a frame uh, which is like a, a stud wall frame. I'm gonna have to build a frame under here that'll carry that across to here, plus some extra supports across this void here. Um, I don't intend to be walking on this to laminate this or gel coat it. I'm thinking I'm gonna put a ladder across with a boardwalk across the middle. And quite frankly, I can actually stand here and reach almost four to five feet in there with a roller on a stick. So shouldn't be a lot of traffic needing, even though I can walk on it, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna biscuit join all of these parts together. I don't want to ruin those bits of wood, but by biscuit joining them means I can just pull it apart at the end and I haven't actually destroyed these large sheets of uh, very, very high quality. Um, it, it's got like a Spanish finish on it. I'm not really sure what you call it, but it's like a high gloss vinyl on it, which will be great for gel coating on. By biscuit joining all of this bit together, I'll be able to get it together, pull one product off it, and then just disassemble it without any major issues. But uh, yeah, it's a big job. This has been, every afternoon I do a couple of hours work on it, and getting those panels in there was hard enough. Doing this part is gonna be a bit of a challenge, but Okay, so I've got to make a template here. I'm going to use this chain jig. Now, this thing's probably around the best thing I've ever had. Um, I got this idea from Leo on Tally Ho Project, and uh, they used to use that to make the frames for the old timber boats. But these biscuits are around about 12 centimetres long, and I just rounded them off, uh, wing nutted them all together. And I've been using this all through the project, and seriously, it has served me very well. You could always use a ticking stick or a or some version of a, a, uh, a ticking stick, I guess you call it. Well, I don't really know what else you call it, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this template. Just got some MDF strips here that I'm going to screw into the chain, and then I'll tighten the chain up and then directly transfer it straight onto my blanks there. It's not a very detailed process, but it's, uh, it's very simple and it does work really effectively, and it's a great way to derive a template. I've worked out that this is the height that I'm after, where that black line is all the way around, which will continue the shape here. I don't want any undulations or irregularities in the shape of this roof. I just want one big, nice, flat roof. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add anti-slip where necessary, solar panel access where necessary, and solar panel installation. And obviously, there's going to be lines in the works uh, from my traveller or the uh, or the German sheeting that I'm probably going to install onto this. So just simply doing this chain jig will cut down a lot of templating for me. I'm going to transfer this straight onto here, and then I'll cut it with the jigsaw. Now, I do have to be mindful that that is actually the bottom of this piece, not the top. So I've got to allow around about um, another centimetre for the slope. It's a 45 degree angle, and I'll be cutting that with a jigsaw, and I'll lift that in place, and basically then I'll cut this edge with a jigsaw to get the actual shape. all right i'm almost finished i've got the bracing done here this one's across the back end i've got the new sheet over here I'm just going to cut it to size there is going to be a tiny slither up in the end here sadly i'm going to lose about um or oh, probably about 10 centimeters i'm going to have extra which is going to go from here all the way along but you know that's just part and parcel of the whole thing and uh, at least i'll be able to get it done so i'll get that done that's basically all supported now and all i need to do 
just cut this piece and slide it into place and uh, and continue on and I can start biscuit joining and uh, and start the preparations for laying up my cockpit roof. Right, so now I can just biscuit join it all together and just make this last small area up the top here. So I've just got to make a, an arc slither here. Don't really know how I'm going to do that. That's going to be a bit of an unusual jig to make there, but I'll certainly get it right. And a couple of small pieces here, and then it's ready to go. I just basically need to biscuit join it all together and uh, polish it up, plasticine all the joins, and spray up.